don't know if you've ever had a life crippling problem. And then Jesus heals you. Because if you did, you'd stood up for that song. Listen. Because it's so good when it comes. He's so good. But I needed friends to help me get there. I needed somebody to tear off the roof and get me in front of the, the healer, the deliverer, right? And I feel like um, that's what we do here. So, okay, so this is, message is called a communion of love because I feel like that's who we are here. That's what we do here. That's what this is. It's a communion of love. Um, so I'm going to start off reading <clears throat> Mark 2. Why did we not start off with verse 1? <laughs> anyway, if you have the Bible or your phone, we're going to read Mark 2 in the very beginning. Um, so... When he returned to Capernaum after some days, it was reported that he was at home, and many were gathered together, so that there was no more room, not even at the door. So Jesus has gone home. He's now living in Capernaum. He's um, speaking to people. People have gathered, and they've heard he's there, and they've come to hear him, to be by him, to see him. Um, and there's so many people that now there's no more room in the home for even one more person to fit in. So verse 3, and they came. And they came, bringing to him the paralytic, carried by four men. And when they could not get near because of the crowd, they removed the roof above him. And when they made an opening, they let down the bed on which the paralytic lay. Listen, you need some friends in your life who ain't going to stop, who ain't going to give up, who are going to keep fighting, who are going to keep praying. No matter what happens to you, they're going to they're gonna get you to the answer that you need. They're going to keep fighting for you. They're not going to be like, oh, that's so sad about your, about your luck. Sorry about that. Listen, you need people in your life who are going to fight for you, pray for you, encourage you. They're going to they're gonna find a way. They will find a way to make it better for you. So they removed the roof above him. And when they made an opening, they let down the bed on which the paralytic lay. And when Jesus saw their faith, listen, when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, son, your sins are forgiven. Son, your sins are forgiven. Listen, so when you, when you have somebody that you love and you pray for them, God responds to that. It doesn't matter about the person. Do you know what I mean? Like he saw their faith. The faith of his friends. He was so touched by the faith of his friends that he responded by healing their friend. Okay? He responded by healing their friend. So when we do, like, prayer up here, do you mean sometimes we'll pay, pray for people by proxy? Do you mean somebody will stand in for their friend and I'll pray over them for their friend? Listen, that's a good friend. Somebody probably prayed for you to be here. Somebody probably prayed for you to be here. Listen, I had a grandma that I never even met, but I heard she was a praying grandma and that she always prayed for her family. Listen, I, that's probably part of the reason I'm even alive. Do you know what I mean? I was born with um, fetal alcohol syndrome. I had to have two heart surgeries at birth. I'm probably only here because I had a praying grandma. Do you know what I mean? Who was like, not, not my family, not my child. I pray, I'm telling you, I have, I have done some, I have grandkids that live in North Carolina, and I can remember when I first was getting clean and sober, and my son was a mess, and I, I knew he was a mess, but I didn't want them to not have family. I didn't want them to not be a part of us. Listen, sometimes I would go down there, and their mama would be so mad at my family and my son. I'd drive all the way down there, get a hotel, make a plan, and she wouldn't even let me see him. She wouldn't even let me see him. But listen, I wasn't, mm, mm I'm coming back. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. How many times have I been to North Carolina this year? Like three. <laughs> listen, I, I'll keep coming back. I'll keep coming back to my family. 
Do you know what I mean? I'm not stopping. I'm going to find a way. I'm going to find a way to get to get them the love that they need, to get them before the Father. Do you know what I mean? No matter what I got to do. And I would be nice as pie to her. Listen, and the crazy thing is this is how God works. Years later, her daughter ended up living with me. That's God. Do you know what I mean? That's God. Like, he will make a way for you, your family, your friends. Okay, so God, so he said, son, your sins are forgiven. Your sins are forgiven. Now, see, Jesus hasn't even gone to the cross yet. But he already knows what he's about to do. It's a done deal. It's already done. <laughs> it's already done. So he knows. He can tell him, your sins are forgiven. Your sins are forgiven. We'll read the rest of this just to kind of make the point. But when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, son, your sins are forgiven. Now we're at verse 6. Now some of the scribes were sitting there questioning in their hearts. What does this man speak like this? Who does he think he is? He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? And before you get really hard on these guys... I probably would have wondered, like, who does he think he is? Do you know what I mean? Like, in that day, wouldn't you have wondered? You know, because we always got people who get a little too religious, and we're like, you yeah, one too far. <laughs> you know, one too far. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So I, I probably could relate. I probably would have been like, what is happening right now? How can he say that? But listen, this is why he can say that. And he perceives what they're thinking. So verse 8. Okay, tell me quick if I get too far. Verse 8, and immediately Jesus, perceiving in his spirit what they were questioning within themselves, he said to them, why do you question these things in your hearts? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven, or say, rise, take up your bed, and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. Click. Thank you. Click. But that you, because this is important, but that you may know, listen, that you may know, listen, that you may know, that you may know, right now, that you may know. The Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. Right now, God has the authority to forgive your sins. Okay, it's a done deal. He has the authority to forgive your sins. He said to the paralytic, rise, pick up your bed, go home. Immediately, he got up, picked up his bed, and went home. Right? I love that part. Because they're arguing with him, do you know what I mean? So he's like, seriously, okay, get up, go home. The guy got up, went home. Right? Like, that's the amazing thing about God. Um, so he says, which was easier for me to say, I forgive your sins, or pick up your mat and go home and be healed. Um, and actually, it would have been easier for him to say, pick up your mat, because that you can show off. What he did was an internal thing to the man. It was internal. Do you know what I mean? Forgiving your sins is an internal thing. Nobody can see that but you. You're the one who knows. I know what Jesus did for me on the cross. Do you mean that my sins are forgiven? It's an internal thing. Um, we go from glory to glory yes, to glory. Yes. Right? Glory to glory to glory. Um, so the beautiful thing, I love this story. The beautiful thing about this story is, you know, back to his friends, is that we need each other. Okay? We need each other. We really do. Life is hard out there. So even like here, the beautiful thing about here is, um, why, why our mission field looks like it does is because um, we want to get you in front of Jesus. That's my job. So like if you live in our houses, my job is I just want to get you in front of the healer. I just want to get you in front of the deliverer. That's my job. Do you know what I mean? It's just to get you. I don't know what all is going on, and I might not be able to help you, but I know who can. I know who can help you. Do you know what I mean? And that's what I want to do. Is I just want to get you right in front of this wonderful saving God who's going to heal you. Who's going to take away your life crippling problems. I had a life crippling problem for years. For years. I prayed, please, somebody help me. Please, someone help me. I was like the lady with the issue of blood. Every day. Every day. For years. I needed help. I needed someone to help me every day. I needed help. So what we do here is we're just going to get you right in front of the healer, right in front of the deliverer. And that's what happened to me here. Do you mean y'all just put me right in front, right in front of the wonderful delivering God and bam, my life changed. Bam. It's not a problem anymore. Like the thing that was such a problem my whole life is not a problem for me today. 
That's a miracle. That's a miracle. That's what we do here. That's what we do here. So good morning, Facebook. That's what we do here. <laughs> In case you ever want to join us. He can do it right through the screen now, too. Right, right. We already prayed for you on social media. But we need each other. We need each other. So that's all I'm trying to do here. Because people will be like, how do you run a recovery house and you make people go to church? Because because you need to get in front of the healer. You need to be put in front of Jesus. If I'm a good friend to you, that's what I'm going to do. Okay, I'm going to get you in front of the one who can. You don't got to take it. My job is to present you to Jesus. I'm going to tear off the roof. Listen, I'm going to tear off the roof and I'm going to lower you down. From there, it's on you. From there, it's on you what you want to do with it. Okay, but I'm going to do everything that I can. Everything that I can. If we got to give you a place to live, that's what we're going to do. You know what I mean? If i got to help you get a job, that's what I'm going to do. So that I can get you in front of the one who can heal you. The one who can deliver you. Do you know what I mean? I'm going to walk the path with you, too. And show you, once you get your healing, how to go. Do you mean how to get there? How to finish this? Let's keep doing this together. I needed friends. Listen, I thought I could do it myself. I really did try. So many years. Tried to just do it myself. I didn't want any help. And I didn't think friends were a real thing. That's how soured I'd gotten on the world. Okay? I thought people don't really care about you. They really just care about themselves. It, <laughs> that's not true. <laughs> but that's what I thought. I thought, you know, when people say, how are you? They don't really care. They're just waiting to tell me their part. That's what I thought. Do you know what I mean? So I thought, I, I'll just do it myself. Because people don't really care. They don't really care. You know what I mean? Right, but I went to, um, well, for one thing, I needed the right people in my life. See, that's the thing. you got to have the right people in your life. I didn't have the right people in my life. I got the right people in my life now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I have the right people in my life now. You know what I mean? If you got, I was watching somebody, I don't know who it was, some uh, pastor, and he was saying, you know, if you kind of get this idea and all your dudes are like, yeah, let's do it. Yeah, those aren't your dudes. <laughs> those aren't your dudes. <laughs> like if you're going out to do the wrong thing. Now, when we get excited here about what we're going to do, all our people are like, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Oh, my God, let's do it. Trunk or treat for our neighborhood. Oh, let's do that. That's a good idea. Let's do that. Do you know what I mean? That's, that's a good friend. Do you know what I mean? He's going to support you in doing something good for God. I didn't have people like that. I didn't have people like that. Even when I came here, my husband left me. The one person who's supposed to be closest to you. Do you understand? So do you know why? That's how I was so skewed. The one person who should have been there for me when I was going through my hardest time in my life left me for another woman. Yeah. But listen, God got me in front of the right people. He got me in front of the people who were going to tear off the roof. That's what he did. He got me in front of the people who were going to tear off the roof. Listen, and they let me hang out here for a while. You know, I'd come. I'd hang out. I'd come. I'd hang out. I'd come. I'd hang out. I wasn't very social. I didn't really talk to people because I still didn't really believe people cared about me until it got so bad. I said, I need some help. Listen, they scooped me right on up, placed me over and gave me a home. Right across the street, put me in that house, prayed for me, picked me up, took me to women's Christmas dinner. I mean, things I did not even care about. You know, I don't care about no women's Christmas dinner. I'm trying to save my life here. Um, but, you know, that, like, tore the roof off, did what needed to be done to help me. Once I got the right people in my life who were willing to do what it took to help me get better, to help be accountable, were they always sweet? No. Am I always sweet? Ask them. Not so much. Listen, I'd rather you hate me. I'll be that good a friend to you that I'll risk you not liking me to tell you the right thing. To tell you, road's out ahead. You're heading in the wrong direction. And you can say what you want to me, but I'm going to tell you the truth. Do me because I love you enough. To tell you the truth. Amen. To tell you that's not a good way to go. Listen, come back over here. Come back, please. Come back over here. Don't go there. Don't go over there. It's better over here. <laughs> it's really better over here. And people get mad at me, and that's okay.
But you know what? They come back sometimes. They come back. And they'll be like, oh man, it's a mess out there. I was like, I oh, know, I told you, it's a mess out there. It's a mess out there. But anyway, so we need each other, and I needed this place. It's one of the one of the things that, that got me free when I needed to be free. There's also, the thing I want to tell you is, um, you know, not in, I've had other hard times, but I also want to talk about good things that happen when you need people in your life. And I'm looking at Sally because um, Joe and Ariel just had a wedding. Do you guys know who Joe and Ariel is? If some of you know, a couple of you know. Um, listen, they're a lovely couple. They got married. It, they kind of threw it together. We had people make flowers yeah. for their tables. We had people bring food. We had somebody doing sound. We had somebody um, helping her go get her dress. Do you know what I mean? They rallied together, tore off the roof to make this happen for her because that's what they wanted was to be married on this particular date. Because I was like, I wasn't even in town. I'm like, why? They're like, this is the date. This is the date. I'm like, okay, you guys go. But listen, you need people to kind of rally around you in the good times and the bad. And I, I talk about it a lot, but it's significant in my life. I lost my son. Listen, I needed people. I needed good friends. I needed good friends in my life. I had people who supported me through that. It was one of the hardest things to walk through in my life. And I had people praying for me. I had people calling me. I had people brought me food. Listen, I even brought this because this was so amazing to me. This is a little card. It had flowers with it. It says Men's Recovery House. Right? I still have, this was four years ago. I still have it because it touched me so much that people in their position thought enough of me to get me flowers and then lined up to hug me at the service. Do you know what I mean? That, that got me through days of thinking of them and what they did for me. Do you know what I mean? You need the right people in your life. They're going to be there for you to help you and get you in front of the Father. When you can't get there yourself, you need friends who are praying for you, interceding for you, getting you in front of the Father when you can or you don't want to or you're sick of it. You need friends who are going to get you through. Amen. Yes. I know, right? God is so good. Listen, so he will put the right people in your life. you got to stick with them. And we know when we have toxic people in our life. That's a whole other message. But I have a really good message on boundaries if you ever want to talk about it. <laughs> uh, that Lisa Turker's book, Goodbyes and Good Boundaries. Listen, sometimes you've got to let some people go. They're holding you back. They're weighing you down. Okay, they are not the people that you need in your life. And learning how to let that go, do you know what I mean, is a challenge. But God will help you. And you can secretly intercede for them. Do you know what I mean, in your life. I have a couple people like that right now, and I just keep praying for them. You know what I mean? That's the best I can do is continue to pray for them. I'm still being a good friend to them. But sometimes there are people, sometimes there's family. You've got to let go of because they're not helping you. They're dragging you down. Yes, it's all good. It's good, it's good. So have some good friends in your life. I'm talking about a communion of love. A communion of love. Proverbs 17 says, a friend loves at all times. A friend loves at all times. Um, I always think about um, uh, Joyce Myers tells a story about her son um, was getting on her last nerve. Just kept getting on her last nerve and you know bothering her. And she'd like get some popcorn, he'd eat her popcorn. She'd get a drink, he'd eat it, he'd take her drink. You know what I mean? Like just all this stuff. Well, she was upset and, and went off on him a little bit. And then like the next day he sent her flowers. <laughs> She said, now, if he'd have sent the flowers first. <laughs> right? So it makes me think about, you know, like, um, love never fails. Love never fails. Do you know what I mean? So you want to continually love. Just keep loving on people. Love never fails. That's the verse for my son, my son that's still out there. Love never fails. That's my verse for him. Um, in John, uh, it says that a friend... Lays down his life for his friend. And Jesus said, you're my friend. Yeah. You are my friend. So listen, on the night before he died, while they were eating, Jesus was with his friends. He was with specific people that he wanted around him 
at that moment on the night before he died. He was with his friends. Like, I just love that. Do you know what I mean? That these are the people he chose to share his last meal with, his friends. And he says, you're my friend. You are my friend. So he wants to share his meal with you. These were his guys. Do you know what I mean? So they were enjoying each other, fellowshipping. Um, he knows his time is short. They're hanging out together. And so while they were eating, Jesus took the bread. And when he'd given thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body. Do I need to click? Nope. Then he took the cup. When he'd given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many, the forgiveness of sins. Click. Thank you. This is, I tell, uh, this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for, the men, for many, for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I'll not drink from it again, from the fruit from this vine, until the day when I drink it with new with you in my father's kingdom. So he was saying, this is my last meal. And it won't, we won't have this again together until we're all together again as one. Um, so that's, so we're going to, we're going to do communion today. So Jesus asked us to continue to come together um, as a body to remember that we're his friends. Okay, that we're the ones he chooses to be with. He wants us to do this in memory of him, in memory of the new covenant, in memory that what he did, his love for you, covered your sins. Took it all away. That's how much he loved you. His body bruised, beaten, broken for you. So it's not to remember this great sacrifice that he made, but he wants you to remember the love, the communion of love that he had for you. Because we'll forget you know, we'll get going with our lives, and you can kind of forget how much he really, really loved you. So he says, don't forget. Do it once in a, take, take this time together with your friends and do this together so that you won't forget how much I loved you. You know what I mean? The price that I paid to be with you. I just wanted to be with you, and I was willing to pay that price just to be with you. So we're going to take communion. If I could have someone take this away. And then Alan and James, can you come up here and help me with this table? Thank you, sir. You're welcome.